In this lesson, I will show you how to leverage ChatGPT to conduct research, find the right programming language syntax, and perform code debugging. So the first question is, what is ChatGPT? ChatGPT is an artificial intelligence large language model developed by OpenAI. It has been trained on a massive amount of text data from the internet, which allows it to generate human-like responses in natural language. So to try out ChatGPT, first you need to go to this link, openai.com, and then you will find a quick introduction here to ChatGPT, and you can simply just say, try ChatGPT. You need to insert your email, and then you can go ahead and try it out. Simply, all you need to do is to write questions here in human language, and then the chatbot is going to answer back to you. So it can help you write emails, write essays. It can help you as well with your general workflow. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to show you five use cases, specifically when it comes to Python programming. So first, I'm going to show you how you can leverage ChatGPT to conduct research and find the right programming language syntax. So let's assume that you would like to learn how to define a conditional statement in Python. So I can go ahead and simply ask ChatGPT the following question. What is the syntax to define a conditional statement in Python? And if you press enter on your keyboard, here we go. Basically, you will find that ChatGPT replied back telling you in Python, the syntax to define a conditional statement using the if statement is as follows. If condition, you add colon at the end, and then you type the code to be executed if the condition is true. And then you will find a quick description here. And then here, it's gonna show you as well if you'd like to use the L if statement too. So if you have more than one condition, it's gonna show you as well the code associated with it. And it's also showing you the description of that. Okay, let's assume that you would like to apply a function to a pandas data frame as an example. So I can go ahead and ask this question. How can I apply a function to a pandas data frame? And then when you press enter, it's gonna tell you well, you can apply a function to a pandas data frame using the apply method. The apply method applies a function along an axis to the data frame. And it's showing you as well how you can do this. You can just say df.apply, you write the name of the function, and then you specify the axis here, either zero or one. And you will find as well here a quick example with numbers, and we're gonna show you the output as well associated with it, which is again gonna be super powerful and helpful for you. All right. Next, let's assume that you would like to get some help in understanding some of the concepts taught in class. So what I could do is I can simply ask ChatGPT to pretend that you are my Python teacher assistant. Teach me the concept of Python functions as an example. If you press enter, I'm gonna tell you, well, sure. I'll be happy to help you understand Python functions. In Python, a function is a block of code that performs a specific task. Functions can help break down complex programs into smaller, more manageable pieces. They allow you to reuse code, improve code readability, and make your code more modular. And here it's showing you basically the syntax to write a Python function, and it's showing you what each part basically in the function does. And you can also see an example here associated with it, and the function call as well associated with it too. Okay. Next, I'm going to show you how you can leverage ChatGPT in performing code generation and design. So let's assume that you would like to define a Python function that multiplies three variables together. And I would like to test the function using the following arguments. These are going to be, let's say, number three, 20, and five. I can simply do this. I can just go ahead and type the following. Define a Python function that multiplies three variables together Test the function using the following arguments, 3, 20, and 5. And then when you press enter, it's going to tell you, well, sure. Here is the Python function that multiplies these, these variables together. So here it's going to say def, multiply 3, and the function receives three arguments. And then you can show you as well how to call this function. And it's also using the exact same numbers that I provided in my prompt. So I said here 3, 20, and 5, and that's what you see here. So basically, ChatGPT is not just a simple uh, memorization engine. 
it has reasoning capability. It understood that I would like to call the function, send that function these arguments, and that's what you see here reflected in the code as well. Okay, let's assume that you would like to rewrite that code using lambda functions instead. Well, I can go ahead and write that. So I can say write the code using or rewrite the code using lambda functions instead. Then you press enter. And here we go. What you see right now is going to tell you, well, sure, here is an example of how you can rewrite the previous code using a Lambda function. And this is, again, an additional important feature in ChatGPT that it actually remembered what happened before. So it remembered the previous prompt that I showed here. So before, I asked for a Python function that multiplies three variables together. And here, when I say rewrite the code, I'm referring to the previous code. And that's why it's just already understood that I need to multiply three numbers together. And this is the Lambda function. And here is the call for that Lambda function as well. Okay, next, I would like to show you how you can leverage ChatGPT to perform code debugging. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy basically this prompt here. So here I'm asking, what is wrong with this Python function in one sentence? So this is a function that simply calculates the future value. And the function is called calculate underscore FV or future value. And here I intentionally forgot to add colon at the end of the Python function definition. And if you just simply press enter on your keyboard, here we go, it's gonna tell you, well, the function is missing a colon after the function definition line, which will result in a syntax error. Okay, that's great. I can simply go ahead and ask ChatGPT, can you please fix that function for me? And tell you, well, sure, cert certainly. Here's the fixed function with the missing colon and some additional formatting. So you will find that ChatGPT here added a colon at the end and is showing you that this function should now work properly and return the future value and investment given the present value, interest rate, number of periods, and number of compounding periods per year. Please note that we simply didn't mention any of that information. It just uh, ChatGPT understood what we are doing when we just provided the function in the Python language. All right, let's assume that you are writing your own function and you came up with an error message. So what I could do, you can just simply say the following. I can go ahead and say, what is wrong with this Python code? And what I've done here is I simply copied the error message I obtained from my Jupyter notebook. So if you do that and you press enter, it's gonna tell you, well, the error message su suggests that there is a syntax error in the Python code, specifically on the line where the calculate future value def function is defined. It appears that there is a missing colon at the end of the function definition line. And you will notice here that this is simply the correct code. And it's telling you that this should fix the syntax error and allow the function to be defined properly. All right. You can also use ChatGPT to introduce new features to your code. Let's assume that you have a simple Python function that performs addition. The function simply receives two arguments and it sums up these two arguments together. So what I could do is I can rewrite the function to perform additional features such as subtraction, for example. Let me show you an example prompt. So what I have here is I um, have simply a function. This is a function called mySum. The function receives arguments x and y, and then the function returns z, and it sums up x plus y and just returns the z at the end. And then this is the function call. So here I'm calling the function and I'm sending it arguments. These are five and 10. And what I mentioned here is I said, rewrite the following function so it can have two additional features. The function should take inputs from the user and the function should perform subtraction and addition. So to go ahead and run this, you can just press enter on your keyboard. And here we go. What you see that ChatGPT said, okay, here is the modified mySum function that takes input from the user and can perform addition or subtraction based on user input. What you notice is now simply I have addition operation. I also have subtraction operation. And you will find that the function has been adjusted to receive inputs from the user as well. And it's also here explaining to you what that function does, which is again, super powerful. Okay. What you could also do is that you can also use ChatGPT to perform code documentation. So what I could do here is I can say, can you add documentation to the following code? 
So this is a code here, and I would like to add documentation that kind of explain to me what this function does. And uh, if you just press enter, here we go, it's gonna tell you, well, certainly, here's an updated version of the code with documentation. So you will find that here, the chat GPT has, has uh, commented out and added comments here, and it's also added doc strings associated with it. It's gonna tell you, well, calculate the sum of two numbers. These are the arguments, X and Y. The first number, Y is gonna be the second number. The function is gonna return the sum of X and Y. And it's gonna show you as well here, this is ex example usage commented out. And in this updated code, the my sum function is now documented using doc strings. The doc string provides a brief description of what the function does, lists the function's arguments and their types, and explain what the function returns. And it's telling you as well an example usage of the my sum function is also provided, which calculate the sum of five and 10 and assign the result to a variable call it result. The print function is then used to display the value of result. And that's it. That's all I have for this lesson. I hope you enjoyed it and see you in future lessons.